गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन वे गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अ न्यू पॉइंट ऑफ द चैप्टर दट इज द कंट्रैक्ट स्विचिंग लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैव सीन समथिंग अबाउट द प्रोसेस एंड द थ्रेड्स दैट इज मल्टी टास्किंग प्रोसेस एंड द थ्रेड्स नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू सी द कंटैक्ट स्विचिंग विच इज रिलेटेड टू द प्रोसेस एंड द थ्रेड्स इट्स इन दिस पॉइंट वी आर गोइंग टू सी the cooperative multitasking and the primitive multitasking how it is related to the process and the thread let us see the next so the point that is a continuous switching in operating system process so before going in detail to this contact switching let us see what is the meaning of this contact switching contact switching is going to occur when the computer cpu is going to switch from one process or from one thread to different kind of process or different thread so we have seen in the last lecture itself what do you mean by process or what do you mean by thread so let us have the glance over this process and thread once again so what do you mean by process process is nothing but it is the instance of computer program that is been going to executed by one or many threads is it not we have seen what do you mean by process process is nothing but it is going to contain some kind of programming codes which is going to be activated according to its activity this program code is going to run according to one process similarly i had given you all one example one of an motor right that is nothing but called as a process so now let us see what do you mean by thread this thread is nothing but the execution of a smallest sequence of a program right this thread is nothing but it is going to execute that particular program is nothing but called as a thread and the instance the cpu is going to be executed by that thread is nothing but called as a process okay so this thread is going to manage this sequence of the program instruction independently by its own scheduler so this implementation of the thread and the implementation of the process is going to be differently by its operating process system but in most of the cases the thread is nothing but a component of the process itself so this is nothing what we have seen in the last lecture of the thread and the process so in related to that thread and the process we are going to see what do you mean by contact switching so this contact switching is nothing but when the computer cpu is going to hand over its charge from one process to another process or from one thread to another thread is nothing but called as contact switching so this contact switching is going to allow for one cpu to handle the numerous processes that is nothing but it is going to allow some kind of execution of the program some numerous process or the numerous threads without the need of any additional processor that is nothing but called as contact switching so the contact switching is nothing but a mechanism where you are going to store or restore all the data or the state or the contacts of the cpu in one particular process control block so that the process execution can be resumed from the same point at the later time that is nothing but for example suppose whenever you are going to play a song okay whenever you are going to play a song what kind of, suppose the one particular song is been played for 115 to 20 minutes or suppose it is going to if the song is of 5 minutes and from that 5 minutes 2.5 minutes song you have been listened and where you want you can stop that song immediately is it not and whenever you want you can resume that play again you can play that song after 2.5 minutes again similarly here also the contact switching is nothing but a mechanism where you can store and restore that data any time whenever you want so this operating system or any operating system that is going to allow the multitasking process that is heavily going to relay on some of the usage of the contact switching that is going to allow different processes to run at the same time is it not 
so as i as i have given you the example cpu is the uh, computer is a device where you can run multitasking applications you can see in your mobile also you can run multiple programs at the same time is it not whenever you are going to play a uh, song at the background simul simultaneously you can operate your whatsapp you can operate your instagram you can operate your facebook you can operate some documentation you can uh, look after the uh, pdf document if you want so anything can be accessed at the same time and that is nothing but called as multitasking so for this the, that particular context switching is going to particularly relay on the different processes to run at the same time so basically whenever you are going to follow the multitasking process into this context switching there are three situations you need to go upon which is very necessary for this so the first one is the multitasking so multitasking is when the cpu needs to switch the process in and out of the memory uh, so that more than one process can be running so that is nothing but called as multitasking where you want to switch from one particular program to another from in and out is called as multitasking second thing which is necessary that is the kernel or the user switch when the switching between the user mode to kernel mode it may be used but it's not always necessary so whenever you want to switch from the kernel to the user that time this context switching is going to come into picture but not always necessary and the third one is whenever you are going to have some interrupts so when the cpu is been interrupted and to return the data from the disk to read that particular interrupt that time you need to come up with the context switching so these are the three main situations where the context switching is going to come into the picture first one is the multitasking second one when you are going to run it from the kernel mode to the user mode and the third one is in the interrupt when the interrupt is going to occur so with basic context to, to this context switching we are going to see the cooperative multitasking as we know there are two types of multitasking one is the cooperative multitasking and second one is the non primitive multitasking so the cooperative multitasking is also known as the non primitive multitasking where it is a style of the computer multitasking in which the os never initiates the context switching from running the process to other process so this cooperative multitasking is what this basically this cooperative multitasking is also called as the non primitive multitasking in which the style of computer multitasking in which the computer operating system never initiates never initiates means it is not going to take its own stand from switching from the context switching to from the running process okay from one process to another process so instead this process is voluntarily yield the control that is periodically handled on the ideal state or whenever it is logically blocked in order to enable the multiple actions to be run concurrently when at the same time when simultaneously two to three programs whenever it is running and when basically there is need to control this voluntarily process is need to be controlled or when it is in the ideal state or suppose whenever it is logically blocked when this situation is going to occur then this multitasking or context switching is going to be enabled so this type of multitasking is called as cooperative because all the program must cooperate for the entire scheduling of the scheme to work so in the scheme the process scheduler of an operating system is known as the cooperative scheduler where it is going to run with all the things together and having its own role to reduce down to reduce down to starting the process and letting them back to the control to its voluntary that is on its own it should go back to its own process that is nothing but called as the cooperative scheduler next is the usage 
So although it is rarely used in the modern layer larger systems and it is widely used in the memory constraint embedded systems. This cooperative multitasking is basically used where the large memory system is being used in the embedded systems especially and basically nowadays this embedded system is going getting compact and compact where this modern larger systems are been not used uh, nowadays so widely it is used where the memory constraints are been used like the embedded system process and also in the specific applications like cisc uh, uh, architectures or in the jes2 subsystems so these are some usages where this primitives or non primitive multitasking or you can also call it as a cooperative uh, multitasking systems can be used so this cooperative multitasking is nothing but was been primarily scheduled scheme for basically for the 16 bit application which was employed by the microsoft team for the windows 95 and the windows nt so later on uh, such as the windows 3.1x and by the the classic mac os so basically this uh, windows that is microsoft windows has come up with this uh, uh, cooperative multitasking process so this windows 9x was used with the non primitive multitasking for the 16 bit legacy applications and also this uh, was used for the power pc versions and also it was used for the mac os uh, repair leopard used uh, used for its classic applications so then there is a netware which is the network oriented operating systems which is used for cooperative multitasking up to netware 6.5 So this cooperative multitasking is still used in RISC operating system, RISC architecture operating system. Still, this cooperative multitasking is being utilized. So this cooperative multitasking is also used with awaits in languages with a single threaded event loop in their runtime, like JavaScript or Python. So whenever the languages or whenever the instructions you are going to run with the specific language, like in Uh, JavaScript, or whenever you are going to run your applications into the Python, this multitasking cooperative system is going to run into single-threaded system. We know the what is what do you mean by thread, and uh, likewise, this thread is or of two types, as I we have seen in the last PPTs or in the last lecture itself. That is, it is single-threaded and multi-threaded. So this single-threaded, when you are going to work from one process to another process, when you you want to run. that time this single thread process is going to come into the picture and that is used by this cooperative multitasking so let us see what are the problems going to occur into this cooperative multitasking so as a cooperative multitask systems is going to relay on each process regularly giving up their own time to run the other process on the system is it not so one poorly designed program can consume all the cpu time obviously when we are going to run the multitasking process so one to suppose there are three to four programs running each program is going to take its own time and the cpu is going to give its time to that particular program right for itself to run so either by performing extensive calculation or by the busy awaiting both could cause the whole system to hang is it not whenever you are going to run a large instructions or whenever you are going to run some heavy programs three to four programs simultaneously then each C program has going to have its own particular time to run is it not so that cpu is going to have is uh, that cpu is going to give its own time to each and every program to run so this program is going to been so larger that the cpu is going to wait for so long either or it could be busy the whole time running this larger programs so what could be the problem by this that your cpu might get hang so in a server environment this hazard that makes the entire environment unacceptably fragile that is it is going to become a delicate so that however this multitasking cooperative systems allow some simpler implementations of the applications instead of the large programs this cooperative multitasking to avoid the cpu to be always busy 
or to allow the cpu from avoid the cpu from allowing being to hang over this cooperative multitasking systems is going to run only with the simpler implementations of the applications because either execution is never unexpectedly interrupted as the instructions are very small the executions are never unexpectedly interrupted by the process scheduler for example various functions when you are going to run inside the applications do not need to be re, re, re entered so in contrast to this primitive multitasking interrupts applications can give control to other process outside the application controls itself so let us see the prevention that is the primitive in computing prevention is nothing but it is going to act the temporarily interrupting a task which has been carried out by the computer system without requiring its cooperation and with the intention of resuming the task at the later time this prevention is going to act temporarily that is when a particular interrupt is been occurred the task has been carried out by the computer system so without requiring any cooperation the intention of resuming the task at the later time so such changes can be executed are known as the contact switching is it not when being from temporarily it is immediately going to run with some different task switching from one task to another task that is nothing but called as the contact switching so these are normally carried out by the privileged task or the part of the system known as the primitive scheduler in which the has the power to permit or to interrupt and later resume it back so we know if the interrupt is going to occur we firstly we are going to work on that interrupt and later on after execution 